Can I ask you um, about David Bowie? I'm a massive Bowie fan, oh, yeah. and you had to portray him, didn't you? That is remarkable to do that. How did yes. that all come about? Because it's a bit more serious than the things that you would normally do. Yes, I, I was invited to, um, to do this radio drama last November, and, of course, you feel very, very nervous and quite intimidated by yeah. something like that, but it's the kind of... It's the kind of fear that makes you want to rush towards it mm. rather than back away. I know what you mean. And to study him and just get a greater sense of what a wonderful genius and what an amazing artist. There's not enough superlatives to describe him. And it, it was a very, very uplifting and rewarding experience. Was to it do. towards... Was this whole um, play set towards the end of his life? Was it talking about that? It was set um, during the making of his Black Star album. Ah, right, yeah, of course. Um, when he knew he was fighting terminal illness. And the creativity that that brought out of him. Mm. It was a very, very profound, profound time. And the sense of, of the amazing creativity and, and working with Tony Visconti and Donnie McCaslin, wow. musicians that he knew and trusted for decades. You know, just imagine the creative spark that would have been happening oh, in, in, in that environment. Was he difficult to do? Was he difficult to get a, a handle on? Because he was such a chameleon, you're in changes so often. Well, you couldn't go near the sort of comedic end of the impressions, like the wonderful Phil Cornwall did in Stella Street. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fantastic. I love that so much. That would have been the wrong tone for yeah. something like this. So you just go for... He made a wonderful statement which has stuck with me, uh, which is a wonderful piece of wisdom, and it is, um, if you feel safe in the area that you're working in, you're probably not working in the right area. Oh, Always right. go a little further into the water than you feel you're capable of being in. Go a little bit out of your depth. Wow. And when you feel your feet aren't quite touching the bottom, then you're just about in the right place to do something exciting, which is the, one of the greatest That's mantras amazing. I've ever Absolutely. heard. Absolutely. And his wonderful sense of humour. There was once a time somebody wrote on Facebook somewhere... I'm the best at singing Space Oddity at karaoke. And David Bowie himself came across this and replied, saying, no, you're not, I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I Wonderful. love that, I love that. Now, you went to Dale Winton's funeral. I did, And you did yes. an impersonation of Dale at his funeral, but his family wanted you to do it. You were asked to do that, I was. I, I was asked by um, his longtime agent, Jan, Jan Kennedy, yeah. who was always very supportive and so very matriarchal and kind to Dale for many, many years, and also his friends and family. Um, they just, you know, at first I said, are, are you sure about this? Is yeah, this the right yeah, place? Yeah. Is this the right tone? But they said, please do. You know, we just... To hear his voice would be lovely, they said. So I, I wrote a little verse, and to, to do it with the right tone and do it with love. Yes. And, you know... That's, that's, that's a okay. really, really that's good thing okay. to do. No, it absolutely is. Now, famously, you hoax people. It's almost 20 years ago you did that famous one with Tony Blair when you pretended yes. to be William Hayes. Yes, on the Steve Penk show, that February so 1998. Funny. I love that show. <laughs> so, so, so funny. And earlier on, you played a prank on our very own Dan Wooten. Oh, what shall, a we have a, shall we have a look? He's going to join us now. Dan, come in, <laughs> and then we're going to play I'm this. I tricked by John. Oh. And then I want to see your reaction. <laughs> Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Sorry, yeah, just a moment. Uh, yeah, OK, Dan. Um, it's Simon here. Sorry to uh, interrupt you. A uh, bit of a decision, to be honest with you. I thought it's probably about time, you know, to back up the judging, uh, probably I should release my own single. And so I thought, <laughs> you know what? Uh, I'll do a duet with Eric. I thought what we would do is manamana do 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 manamana do 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 manamana do 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 you know keep it accessible uh can you plug that will you mention that when you go on Lorraine yeah of course you're the best at what you do I wanted this to be put out there intelligently and you know you're just the man to do that uh I'm also putting together uh Britain's Got Talent the movie um, I think we've got Nicole Kidman to play Amanda, Tandy Newton as Alicia Dixon. Um, <laughs> Dan, would you play the part of David Williams? I think I'd be great, yeah. It wasn't great talking to you. It was fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. OK, lots of love and respect. Bye-bye. You're through to the next call. <laughs> <laughs>
I think it was the David Williams moment when I worked it out. I mean, I'm a bit of a Williams, but I don't think I would be much of a Hollywood actor, sadly. Uh, you would do it with infinitely better manners. <laughs> oh, course. that was so funny. That was so funny. But I have to say, I was initially when I got the call, Lorraine, I was thinking, this is astonishing because Simon only ever calls anyone after five o'clock in the evening, right, you know, because he's in up, bed. Of so course. I thought, gosh, what's happened? This must be really serious <laughs> for Simon to be calling me at 7.45am. Oh. Seeing you there, I feel rather guilty for disturbing you there. You've been very at peace in, in the makeup department. It's very good. It's a very good Simon. Uh, it's one of those, um, <laughs> you know, some voices very high, you know, Blair was very much up here. Yes, he was. Um, but Simon, it's uh, it's a deeper voice. It goes into a different sort of tone. Right. Um, you know, the, the gesticulations are pretty good. Yeah. And see, a lot... If Blair was tricked, then I don't feel so bad. Well, exactly. Because John's so brilliant. I know. It's impossible not to, but it's like the power you have, though, you could have so much fun you with people just privately. You, you know? could start a war. You could start a war. Or maybe instigate peace in the world. Or actually. maybe stop one. This is the Donald. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Let's be shiny, happy people. Let's do that. Uh, no. He's a gift, isn't he? He is. He, it sort of makes you feel slightly nauseous the longer you do it. But, uh, but yes, he's the gift that keeps on taking. He's the gift that keeps that on taking. So beautiful, thank you so Absolutely. much. Absolutely.